This is episode 294 of the Beyond the Food Show. And today we're going to talk about body compliance and how as women, we seek to comply to our body, but it quickly spreads through our whole life. And we're going to talk about the agent of solution for that, which is the notion of having our own back. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Going Beyond the Food Show. I'm Stephanie Dodier, clinical nutritionist and creator of the Going Beyond the Food Method. And after a 25-year dieting career that started at the age of 12, I decided to say hell no to diet culture and undiet my life. It is now my mission to help women undiet their life. If you're new to our podcast, be sure to grab our free podcast roadmap at stephaniedodier.com forward slash roadmap. Ready, sisters? Let's do this. Hello, sisters. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. I was teaching a class this weekend to professional and coaches about body image, and I was sharing with them where I am at this stage of my life with my body image. And I was referring to our framework we use in on Diet Your Life, which is a five stage of healing. And and the last one being body liberation. And where I'm working, I want to share it with you today, because some of you, I know many of you, more than some, many of you follow me on social media. And you may have noticed that there is more cleavage in some of the pictures and some of the images that I share. And the reason for that is because I'm learning to unpack compliance with my relationship to different body parts. And I realized a few months back that my wiring for compliance as a woman had led me to have some very black and white thinking, even to my education of feminism. And I was I had adopted without questioning this view that certain body parts on women's bodies should be hidden. And I'm challenging that and I'm working through that. So there's a lot more cleavage in my life because of that, because I'm experimenting, challenging, questioning my relationship to compliance. So if you follow me on social media, you may see more cleavage because of that. That's the work that I'm doing with body image. And that leads us into today's topic, which is about compliance. And I wanted to help you understand why it's beyond the food, right? So many of you know, that's the name of our company beyond the food, our program is on diet your life. And I'm always curious to understand how what diet culture is teaching us is impacting the rest of our life. And compliance is a huge element of this as women. So let's unpack it and see how it shows up in the rest of our life. And also, obviously, what we can do about it. But let's start with the basic on compliance. Compliance is our desire to conform to a norm. A norm is often a societal standard established by a group, a tribe that we belong in, whereby the majority of the tribe member complies to. And this societal norm is typically established by the authority. And our obedience to this societal norm comes through compliance, right? We comply to the demand of the authority figure And when it comes to women, that comes through our body, right? This compliance level objectify women's body. We have societal rules to what a woman body should look like. And these standards establish good and bad, or belonging to the tribe or not, or the opposite side effect, what we run away from is rejection and shame. So body compliance in our current society defines control and constrain 
women to authority. Now, the authority here being patriarchy. So as a result of that, as a result of this need to comply, to remain in the tribe, we learn as women to perform via our body. We demonstrate our ability to self-discipline, to self-control by complying or attempting to comply to societal norm. And so as women, when we comply to that societal norm or we're very busy trying to comply to the societal norm, say it, the 10 ideal right now, when we try or are complying, the result of that is we don't disturb, we don't take space, we don't live by our own agency and our own authority, we comply to others' authority. And we do that, yes, with the 10 idea, but we also do that well beyond. So there's three main behavior that result of this thought and belief that we need to comply for women in our current societal tribal norm. Number one, we discipline our body by um, showing our ability to regulate in in the case of diet culture, the size of our body with dieting and makeup and exercise and the way we dress it. And when we practice these actions, we have a sense of belonging. That's one of the things I hear often when people quit dieting, they feel like they don't belong anymore. It's not the dieting that made you belong, it's the act of compliance. And then we perform action, we perform life through our body. We perform through our body by being self-discipline, self-control. And when we cannot do it via the body size, we do it through other aspects of our body. And I want you to think here of healthism right? Because that's the new trend. Now that it's becoming uncool to like starve yourself, now it's about obsessing with health and having a glow and a radiant and being on detoxes two to three times a year and taking a stack of supplement and being obsessed about your health. That's just performative action through the body just like dieting was, or still is for most women. And we can think about aging, right? We do the exact same thing. We perform action through our body to demonstrate our ability to discipline and our ability to comply with our wrinkles, right? We do the exact same thing. The thing is, we materialize our body, we perform through our body, and we demonstrate our ability to comply because innately, in our mind, in our belief system, we think we have to comply. So today, many women believe themselves to be their body. And we socialize little girls And we still do today to that concept. I shared in the last podcast, Rebellious Eating, that video that I saw on social media of a mom having a set of twins, a boy and a girl, and she was sharing how vividly different strangers were interacting with her girl, always commenting on her looks, on her pretty dress, and how cute she was, and how they were interacting with the boy in a completely different manner, talking about this smart and its strength and its courage. That's how we socialize at two, three, four, five years old, little girls that become us women at 30 years old, who seek to comply so they can meet the societal norm, the requirement to be cute and to be thin and to be small. And the motivating factor behind all of this is shame or the avoidance of shame, or the rejection from the tribe. And here's where it gets really crazy. As adult women, we become our own oppressor. 
No one comes and forces us to comply. We live in a free society, right? We do it to ourselves. We do it to ourselves because of our belief system that's been implemented so young that we think it's normal that we desire to comply and do all the things to comply. And, you know, it hasn't started like 25 years ago, right? We have to remember that this belief system that's in our brain right now that I was sharing with you about my breast earlier in the, in the podcast, I mean, this has been like this for thousands of years. The history of objectification of women's body date back to like, the days of the corset. Like I had this analogy the other day when I was teaching the body image class, like before dieting, like dieting has only been historically traced to about 160 years ago, like the late 1800s. Before that, it was the corset. We were restrained. Our body was restrained with the corset. Today, it's dieting. It's becoming healthism. It's just different name for the act of constraining women's body in order to get our brain in a state of compliance so we obey the authority. Now, it's more than our body. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit deeper here. Although it first starts with this innate desire to comply, which patriarchy uses women's body and our innate desire to comply to make us be subdued and obedient to the authority. When we comply with our body and don't challenge this innate thought that we must comply, which most women don't, unless you actively work on your thoughts and your belief system, right? And again, most women don't, for all good reason. This need for compliance spread to many other aspects of our life that you can think of our need to perform at work, in our career, our relationship and people pleasing, being productive at all time. Compliance becomes a way of living as a woman. We get to understand our whole self, otherwise known as our self image or concept, as being a compliant person, a compliant woman. And that affects the way we think and engage with the world. I often call that diet brain. So if you're new to the podcast, wind back five or six episodes. I'm not too sure there's an episode titled diet brain. Diet brain is the consequence of long-term exposure to dieting and diet culture. And compliance to our body. There's four main characteristics of diet brain, perfectionism, people pleasing, all or nothing thinking, and mental filtering through our body. Now, I want to teach you about something that also came to my own awareness, I would say about seven months ago, and that's the intersection between diet culture and grind culture. So we all know diet culture is the system of belief that place value on the size of our body and our health status. Grind culture is the system of belief that place value on being, quote, on all the time. There's a link between the two and that main link that intersection is compliance. And I'm going to tell you a little story here. Is actually, I came aware of grind culture through work 
in therapy that I'm doing. And my current business in the health field is about 10 years old. And when I started my first practice nine years ago, I was literally on all the time. I gave my patients and clients at the time 24-7 access to me through texting, through Facebook group, through email. I promised them that I would get back to them in six to eight hours, no matter where I was, who I was with, never taking vacation to be dedicated to my clients and my patient. I was reachable literally anytime for anything they wanted. I would wake up in the morning and I would check my email and I would check my social media to make sure I answer all the questions. I had a never ending list of to do. And my badge of honor was being on at all the time and being accessible to anyone at all time. Does that sound familiar to you? That's grind culture. I was grinding because I didn't know how else to be enough. I could not comply my body with the look of the quote health professional. I could not get my body to be small enough to what I believe and what society was telling me that a health practitioner should look like. No matter how hard I dieted, I could not get the look. So unconsciously, without me making a conscious decision, I flipped around and I made myself feel that I was enough by grinding. I found a way of feeling good enough other way by constantly being on all the time it was a defense mechanism grind culture diet culture intersect on the fundamental beliefs and thinking that goes behind it number one grind culture diet culture are born out of fear fear of not being enough One may have a badge of honor of productivity. The other one may have a badge of honor of weight. But both rely on the fear of not being seen as productive or as thin enough. And in order to meet the societal norm of each of those culture, you got to have willpower and self-discipline. And both only exist if you compare yourself to the group, right? Because if you stop comparing your body to other women, there's no goalpost anymore. You're just being you, right? That's the whole goal of body image work, of just being you and stopping the comparison and accepting your body as is. But grind culture is the same way. If you stop comparing your productivity to other people and just being productive as innately you should be, then... There's no running to be the most productive person. So this intersection between the two also rely on compliance. And this is why we as women, because women through socialization and internalization of societal norm with our body, we have wired our thinking, we have adopted this need for compliance, when we meet up with grind culture, which all of us do, we then look, here's the goalpost, look, let me comply to that. We don't question if we should or shouldn't comply, we just do. And or, just like my story, we're using it if we can't meet the societal norm on the right with our body, then we're going to go on the left with grind culture and become the superstar there so we could feel accepted by the tribe by meeting these norms. This is why the journey may have started with the body. 
but it goes far beyond the body. Your journey may have started with letting go of food rules, then you realize it was the body rules. What I'm challenging you today is to see beyond the body and beyond the food and see for yourself how compliance or desire to comply is present in other aspects of your life. Where do you feel that you don't have autonomy? Where do you not exercise your own agency? Where are you not following your gut instinct? Where do you have duality in your life? Where you have a goalpost, but you also have your gut telling you, I don't want to do this. I don't like this. But then you quote, force yourself to do it because you think you have to. That's compliance. Start looking. And perhaps just like me, you're going to find so many places in your life where you've not questioned the goalposts, the standards, the norms. And for years and decades, you're just going through the motion of complying. Now, this may sound, feel overwhelming. So if you're sitting and and listening to me, you're like, oh my God, I have to examine every part of my life. Learning to observe your thoughts, observe your belief system is a skill set. It's something that you learn to do and then you practice doing and over time, it becomes the the way you operate, right? That's why for us in our program, we start with that mindset. We start with the tool, a tool that we teach you that allows you to observe your thoughts, your belief system, and what they create in your life. And then if you decide to change them, there's another tool to help you change your beliefs. But here's the thing, once you've learned that skill set and you made it an automated way of living, which is challenging the norms, then it becomes automated and you apply it to any part of your life. I talked to you about my breast earlier. I talked to you about the work that I did in therapy around grind culture and being productive all the time. It's just now a way of living, of dismantling my belief system that I was socialized to, but that don't fit how I want my life to be. Yeah, it started with food, then it went on to body compliance, and now it's all the other part of my life. But here's the the agent of solution here. As women, we need to learn to have our own back. We need to give ourselves the validation that we seek from other. We need to authorize ourselves to decide what we're going to believe into and to validate that choice for ourselves. When we can validate ourselves, when we can authorize ourselves to believe in our own amazingness in our own beauty in our own goodness when we give ourselves that permission then the validation from others is no longer required or needed and that's how we first liberate ourselves and heal our body image and heal our relationship to food but i'm encouraging you to push it further in all the other aspects of your life and to really challenge the compliance so you can live the life that you want, the life of your dream, the life that is aligned with your own value and that you end this duality that we have in our mind of what we want to do, what our gut feeling wants us to do and what the norm tell us we should do. How much of our time is spent in our mind with that duality and argumentation in our own mind. 
when we learn to have our own back, create or dismantle first the old belief system, like the one of diet culture, the one of patriarchy, and we rebuild our own belief system that lines up with our value and the way we want to lead our life. That's when duality vanishes. That's when peace comes in because we're moving in the direction that we want to move in, not the one that we feel, quote, force to do. So I'm inviting you to first observe your thought and then challenge them when you feel that you need to comply. Use the principle of intuitive eating called curiosity versus judgment and be curious everywhere where you use the quote, I have to, do you really have to? Or can you choose what feels good for you, what feels right for you out of love instead of fear? And that does require this commitment of having your own back of validating yourself, authorizing yourself through this process of choosing your new beliefs. On that note, I love you sisters, and I'll see you on the next episode. Beyond ready to shed diet culture from your life and become the expert at your own body? Awesome, then you need to join on Diet Your Life program. Go to stephaniedozier.com forward slash join and join us now. On Diet Your Life is the first program of its kind with the unique combination of mindset, life coaching with intuitive eating and body image. Find your freedom, reclaim your power and take control of your time so you can refocus on what really matter to you. Join on Diet Your Life at stephaniedoze.com forward slash join and I'll see you on the other side.